All right, uh, in this video, uh, really what I want to do is I want to just talk about the very basics of piecing together a walk cycle. Uh, in terms of the poses that we use, such as key poses, so you can kind of see I've got a reference plane inside my viewport. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I'm just going to be using a very basic character today. This is a character that has a custom rig built for it. It's very, very simple custom rig, just using point helpers and IK chains. Uh, and if I take the character's movement control, right, I have some bobbing up and down here. So I'm going to show this character just because it's more simplistic, right? It's just focusing on the legs. And that's what this little video is about is kind of just talking about the leg key poses for a walk cycle. Um, now with this character, because it's a custom rig, we don't necessarily have features such as copying and pasting of poses from one side to the next. So I'll be talking about kind of how I go about uh, working with a rig that does not have those features. Um, typically, most characters, I rig them with some something like a biped, uh, some sort of pre-made rigging system because it has a number of different features already built into it, which can just simply save you a ton of time, uh, a ton of frustration as well as you're animating. All right, so with this character here, uh, again, very basic character. Uh, I'm going to start here by turning on auto key. Uh, and really what I'm talking about here is just essentially kind of like a first pass um, blocking in your leg movements in the end of, by the end of this video we will have the character walking but uh, it's not going to be necessarily polished off it's going to look okay but it definitely is not going to be let's call it like a final product quality so we start with uh, essentially just kind of breaking down the poses right these are key poses that we typically work with um, for a walk cycle I usually start students with an image first before we actually hop into any sort of like real life reference because a lot of times um, you might be looking at reference but you might not actually understand what poses you're looking for so if I am looking at reference um, typically I'm utilizing this little image here to kind of help me with the poses that I'm looking for in that reference footage so for the the simplicity of the lesson I'm just gonna use the image right I'm just gonna use the angles and the legs here and I'm gonna justify this onto my character. Now, when you're using reference though, you gotta understand the anatomy of the character that you're animating might not be the same as the anatomy of the character in your reference. So for instance, the length of legs, um, the, you know, just the overall volume of different areas of the character's body, right? It's going to be different. So you have to use your reference with a grain of salt. You have to understand that you need to adapt your character a little bit more or adapt your poses to kind of cater it a little bit more to what your character is, right? Again, not every piece of reference can be perfect. Um, now, I, reference helps us though when it comes to animating. Uh, it's very difficult for you to animate without reference. There are ways of doing, it, of course, but like typically you should be working with some sort of reference when you are animating, especially if it's something like a walk cycle. All right, so let's get into this here. Um, I'm gonna start inside my left view. Uh, I have my reference plane kind of set up here, where this drawn out line in the reference is actually kind of lined up with my grid, right? If I hit G on the keyboard, kind of turn that on and off, I can see the grid here the ground. So we're currently working with 30 frames. Um, we'll change that as we go. Uh, as we're working right now, really what I'm focused on is my first key pose, which is going to be our first step. Again, with a walk cycle, run cycle, any sort of cycle, uh, it's a looping animation, right? So we're working with just simply two steps here. Those two steps will then be looped, and then the movement forward of the character, side to side, left, whatever direction, all of that is driven by the character controller in the game engine itself, right? So we're not actually moving the character positionally forward, right? We're not doing that, right? We are just simply having our character walk in place. So I'm going to start with my contact pose here. Again, it's really important that we understand the head height positioning of all these different poses. You can see this kind of like loose curve that's being created, this S-like curve. It's important that we do get that movement in our character's body, right? So I'm, I mainly look at the head height, but ultimately what you're doing is you're changing the center of gravity's position, right? You're either moving your character up or you're moving your character down for the specific animation here, the specific example. So I'm gonna start just by kind of lowering my character down a little bit here. I'm looking at my reference, I can see the right leg is forward, left leg is back, so I'm just gonna go in and my pose is not gonna be identical to my reference, however, it's going to be pretty close, right? So again, I'm just going in here, 
typically when we make contact when we're walking, we make contact with our heel first. So you can see I'm actually rotating my character and I'm making sure that my character's heel is making contact with the ground. And we can see the angle of the foot for this back leg here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that, rotate my toes up like so. Just make sure my feet are in fact on the ground. A really important thing when you are doing walk cycles and run cycles, uh, you never want to have your character's feet dipping under the ground here or kind of like floating on top of the ground. We want to make sure it is sliding across the ground. So this is going to be my first pose here again, just kind of looking at the overall angles and the legs. Um, my front leg here, typically I don't want to have it too, too straight. You can see in the reference, it's very straight. I usually don't want to do it that straight. I want to have a slight bend in the knee there. Again, a little bit of an angle in the ankle and in the knee. So we've got our first pose. I'm now going to go ahead and typically for a walk cycle, again, if you have video reference, the video reference is basically going to tell you, uh, you know, where those frames or where those key poses need to be placed. Um, we're not using any video reference here. So typically what I do is I just try and space these poses out rather evenly. So I'm gonna do uh, three frames here or go to frame three rather, rather uh, for my next pose. So our next pose again is our down pose. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to take our character, we need to just simply lower them down a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my character and lower it down. So you can see as I scrub between zero and three, we have a little bit of a bob in the character's body, which is important, right? This is where the weight is being shifted onto the entirety of the foot, right? We can see that with our reference. And that foot is also then gonna slide back here. So again, I've got a little bit of a, a bob down with my character. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that front foot now. Again, looking at our reference image, we can see it's flat with the ground and the calf is actually angling in towards the body. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and replicate that. So I'm going to rotate this down, move the foot down again, using my grid to kind of line it up with the ground so it's not going to be dipping through at all. Okay, and I've moved it down. I flattened it out with the ground. I'm now going to slide it back a little bit. And taking a look at what's happening with our back leg, we can see now it's kind of, we still want to have the toes kind of, you know, slightly touching the ground, but you can see we're removing all of the curvature from the actual foot itself. Uh, you can also see the angle of the ankle. Notice the, the direction of the way that these toes are pointing. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of angle this out like so. Rotate my toes out. Start to lift up the leg. Kind of like so. Now, again, this is our blocking pass. So as we do things, you can see I'm starting to kind of scrub through my animation just to kind of preview this. Uh, your in-betweens, right? So things like, you know, frame one and frame two, uh, your foot might be slightly dipping into the ground, which is fine. Um, we're not really too concerned about the in-betweens right now. I'm really just focused on the actual key poses themselves. So don't stress about these the kind of, let's say like the transition if the toes are slightly dipping to the ground. Right now, that's fine. You can fix that in your second pass and your polish pass. Again, we're focused on our key poses, right? So I'm just kind of scrubbing through here. Ultimately, when you are scrubbing through, um, you're gonna notice poses that you actually don't like necessarily. Like as soon as you start getting other key poses planted along your timeline, there's going to be moments where you might want to go in and actually change up a pose, which is good. I mean, you, you should not be content with the overall pose right away. Uh, you need to be kind of in the understanding that you might want to go in and actually change that pose. And you don't really know how to change it until you get other key poses along your timeline. Right. So let's go three more frames into the future. We're going to go to frame six here. Again, looking at my head height, you can see we're now going into our passing pose. So this is where the one leg actually takes over that front leg position, right? That left leg is going to be swinging forward here, right? And that knee is going to overtake the knee of the leg that's actually sliding back along the ground. You can see with the reference, right, our head height, we want the head to actually be slightly higher than our contact position. So typically what I'll do here is I'll actually grab whatever's controlling the movement of the body. So if you're using a biped in Max, this is gonna be the BIP, but I have this little circle spline around this character here. I'm gonna copy frame zero to frame six just to ensure that my character is now back at that contact head height. And I'm just gonna simply push it up a little bit more here, right? 
maybe that's a little bit too much, just a little bit more. So we're just ensuring by copying that keyframe, we know the character is coming to at least that contact head height. And then I'm taking my gizmo and just simply pushing my character up just a little bit more. So again, this is our passing pose here. So looking at our reference, we can see that leg that is now flat with the ground is going to have to slide back here. And the leg that's picking up is actually now moving forward. And again, we want to have the left knee kind of overtake the right knee here. So what I'll start to do is I'll just grab this foot and just slide it back. Now, as we slide it back, I have auto key on. I'm recording keyframes, but notice I'm only recording the position key because I've only actually animated my position. I'm going to ensure that I also create a rotation key on this pose because I don't want to have the foot rotating into the ground kind of like so as it slides back into this position here. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click over top of my scrubber. And I'm going to turn off position and scale. And I only want to create a rotation key there on frame six. All right, so we've got that flat. Uh, I'm going to slide it back a little bit here. And I'm going to take that back leg and start to swing it forward. Again, I'm looking at the angle right, on my reference here of all those different joints. I'm trying to replicate that in this character. Again, creating a little bit of a gap between those legs. So continuing forward, frame nine. Frame nine is going to be our up pose. Again, you can just simply look at our reference here. We want to take the head height and slightly lift it up even higher. Again, this is the peak position for the head right? We're really pushing off that foot. And then we're going to come right back down onto that left foot for our second contact pose. So I'm going to take my spline here and I'm just simply going to lift it up a little bit more. Right. So as we scrub through, right, you can kind of see how things are starting to kind of piece together. So on frame nine, I, again, I have my head height lifted up. We're then going to grab the leg sliding back. We can see we're no longer flat on the ground, right? This foot, we're now rolling or kind of moving that weight onto more of like the balls of the feet of the character. So I'm just going to kind of rotate, excuse me, my foot to kind of match this angle, lift it up and just kind of slide it back a little bit. Again, I'm going to turn on my grid for a second here just so I can see exactly where that ground is located. Slide it back. And then I'm going to take the left leg here and just kind of swing it forward again, kind of replicating what I'm seeing inside my reference. Oops. There we go. Again, just scrubbing through. Right, You can see that leg starting to slide back here now. Uh, again, on frame nine, we might feel like this back leg needs to straighten a bit more. So again, we're kind of just blocking in our poses, right? That's why it's called a blocking stage. So we can always go back and look at things afterwards. Uh, so I made that pose again on frame nine. Um, so that's going to bring us into our second contact pose, which is actually the end of the first half of our animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rescale my timeline here because I know I just need three more frames. And our first step is going to end at frame 12. So I again, I know the head height needs to be the same. Again, we're doing a looping animation. When you're doing a walk cycle, each step needs to be symmetrical. As soon as you make any sort of asymmetric changes, you're starting to add more characterization to the to the actual character, right? Um, but you're actually, you know, you're, you're stylizing things, right? You're you're making it so, you know, you might have a limp, or maybe you're doing a zombie, whatever it might be, right? Typically, though, for for main characters and just like a, you know a stereotypical walk, we want it to look symmetrical. Right, so I'm ensuring that I'm copying frame zero down to frame 12 here. So my character goes back into that same head height position, right? So that's been taken care of. We now want to replicate the pose that we have on frame zero here, right? This contact pose. I want this same pose, but I want it on the opposite legs. This is where using custom rigs can kind of be a pain because if you're using a custom rig and you don't have code support, you might not have copy paste features within that custom rig, right? It's just the reality of it. That's why it's really nice to use things like a biped inside Max because you can utilize the copy paste features and it can save you quite a bit of in production time. Uh, and it also ensures that the posing on each leg is going to be the same. Right, because we're just simply copying one pose and we're pasting over to the other, uh, which is quite handy. Right now, 
Again, we don't have that luxury with this character here, and that's what we're focusing on is just using this custom rig here. So I want to kind of just talk about uh, my overall techniques for approaching these areas, right? Or, or kind of like approaching, um, making sure you have kind of the same pose on each leg for each step, right? Making sure it's nice and consistent. So I set things up here. So I've got my last pose in my timeline is frame 12. Again, this is going to be our second contact pose. Uh, on frame zero, we have our original contact pose. So again, what I would like to do is I want to use my period and comma keys on the keyboard and it actually allows me to go between those two frames, right? And I'm actually flickering from 12 to zero here, right? Beginning of my animation to the end of the animation. So I can see the poses, right? I can see the differences. And what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my front leg here and as I flicker, so this is frame zero, I want to replicate the pose of this front leg that I currently have on frame zero, except I want to do it on frame 12 with the opposite leg. So I'm going to grab that leg and I'm just going to simply start moving it into position here. Like so. Again, once I start moving it in, I can kind of just flicker back and forth. Again, kind of see the differences between the two. Uh, for video's sake, I'm not going to spend too long trying to make this quote unquote perfect. And there might be better ways of doing this too. Uh, this is just simply the way that I approach this. So you can see there's a little bit of a twitch in that ankle. Right, but again, pretty much the same pose. And I want to do the same thing with the opposite leg here. Right, so I'm going to grab the foot. Again, we can see what we need here for this pose. Looks like we might actually want to, I want to take my foot I just slide it forward just a little bit. That way it has a little bit more distance to travel to frame 12. So I'm just going to pull it back, I'm going to angle up the foot. Again, making sure that foot is in fact flat on the ground. Right, so you can kind of see as I flicker between the two, again, not perfect, but definitely close enough. So what I want to do here is I want to now kind of replicate this process for my second step. Again, you can see as I scrub through my animation, I very clearly have the movement for a step here for this character. I want to ensure, again, I have consistency on each side. So the first thing we're looking at is how many frames did we use? Well, we used 12 frames. So that's 12 frames for one step. If I'm doing, again, a symmetrical animation, I want to make sure the timing of each step is the same. So if I'm using 12 frames for my first step, I need to add another 12 frames for that second step. And you can see that's what I've done with my timeline here. So I'm now going to go in and before we start working with the legs, we need to ensure again consistency in each step, right? I've been saying that since the beginning. So I'm going to take the control for my weight shift control. Again, this is typically like, um, like a bip for a biped, like a bipedal character. If you're using the biped, you would grab the bit for this. For me, it's this circle spline, right? That's how I'm controlling my body moving up and down. I'm gonna go ahead and just simply copy all of the keyframes from zero to 12. I'm gonna hold shift and just slide a new set down and just lay that over top of the second half of my animation. So if we press play here, we kind of have like a step and a bob up and down. And again, by copying this, all we're doing is just simply ensuring that the head height is going to be the same with each step. Again, consistency for having a nice symmetrical walk. So that's been taken care of. Now, what we're going to do is the same thing that I just did for my contact pose. I'm going to replicate that process all the way down my timeline for all these new poses. So we're going to line up frame 15 and frame 3 here. Again, this is going to be our down pose. So we're going to go into our left view. Again, this is frame 3. We can see the pose that we want to have, and then we can see what we currently have here. right? So again, I'm just going through. I'm going to roughly place my pose here. I typically kind of move it uh, kind of more into the position that I feel like it needs to be first before I start flickering between the two frames. Okay, just kind of sliding it down, going back and forth here. You can see I need to move it back a bit more. All right, so once you see minimal movement, that's good. Grab the other leg now. Again, looks like I need to rotate this back. Slide this back like so. Again, start flickering. Right, 
All right, so that's good. So I'm going to keep on doing this now, right? So I'm just going to hold down on Control and Alt, and then I'm going to click down with my middle mouse button. Just simply slide down my timeline, right? So we're done with our down pose. We're now looking at the passing pose. Again, the passing pose on frame six for the first half of our animation is here. We now need to do that pose on frame 18. And again, it's replicating the same process. Now notice I'm not grabbing my, my like circle spline control, like my weight shift control. That's already been taken care of, right? That's why we copied and pasted those keys, right? Just to ensure that we don't have to go in and make any more changes. I just want to create a rotation key here for my toe. Again, taking a look, oopsies, taking a look at our leg moving forward here. Again, this, uh, this technique is also only really possible in your left view. Could be wrong there, but... All right, so again, we've got that. Let's just take this, move it down a little bit. Continuing on, right? Just simply moving on down once we're done with our passing pose. We're doing the same here with our up pose. And really just kind of replicating the process at this point. I'm just going to move this forward like so. I'm going to take my leg and slide it back, rotate this. Again, once we think we have a pose here, kind of just go back and forth. Looks like I maybe angled the ankle up a little bit too much. Again, this could all change, right? All of these poses can change once we have everything pieced together. We're then going to press play and we're going to see what we got. And then we make our decision afterwards. All right, good enough in the back leg. Looks like front leg maybe needs to come back just a little bit. Ease up on that toe. Right? Again, scene going back and forth looks good. Now, as we get into the final contact pose, right? So we're just going to stretch out our timeline here. So we're working with all of our frames now. Right, so we're going to work with 24 frames. Again, we don't have our last contact pose. Your last contact pose, however, is going to be the exact same as your first contact pose, right? This is going to be a looping animation. So all looping animations, doesn't matter what it is, the first pose must be identical to the last pose, right? That's how we create that seamless loop. If you don't do that, especially with a walk cycle, you're going to have you know, areas where maybe the leg kind of snaps or pops at the end of your animation, and it's going to reoccur that pop, or that pop is going to reoccur uh, every time your animation ends, right? It ends and then begins again. You're going to keep seeing that. So what we're going to do here is I'm actually just going to simply lasso select my whole character just so that I'm selecting all of my rigging components, and I am simply copying frame zero down to frame 24. And I'm going to hit space bar here, Right, just simply hitting play. And at this point, again, this is our blocking pass, so it's not gonna look perfect, right? You can kind of see I've got areas where the foot kind of slides back, that you know, a little bit of a jitter in that foot. Now is the time where I'm gonna have to go in and polish off the cycle, right? I'm gonna look at my poses, feel, you know, any areas that I feel like look abnormal or might have you know, again, like speed bumps is typically what I say if I'm looking at the curves, right? I might have some speed bumps in those in those curves that I want to go in and kind of smooth it out a little bit. But again, this is just simply how you go in and kind of start with a walk cycle here. And this exact same process can be taken for even like a biped character, right? You wouldn't have to do that same process where you're trying to go in and match the poses. You could just simply use the copy paste features.